I've done a lot of videos about the turntable controller, but I think it's equally important to talk about the turntable that you're gonna be using this on and the requirements for it. So before we get into it, let me explain what you're looking at. This is the bottom of my turntable that you've been seeing in all the videos. Um, I printed this off of a file made by someone on Thingiverse. I didn't come up with this, but it's free, open source. Um, I just printed it. it, works really good with this controller. Now what you're seeing here is the bottom of the turntable and this big gear, there's actually a shaft that goes through the middle of this and the turntable is on the other side. So as this big wheel turns, the turntable on the front turns. You can see that there's a small little uh, 28 BYJ 48 5 volt DC stepper motor here and there's a small gear which in turn turns this big gear. Um, here you've got a slip ring and then you can run power to your tracks through this slip ring. So that's what we're looking at here um, as far as what the turntable has. The items that you'll need to add are a limit switch or a Hall effect sensor so that the turntable can home and find it zero position. And that's what you see here. It's that uh, Hall effect sensor. So the Hall effect sensor interacts. It can tell the position of the turntable with this little neodymium magnet. Um, it's important that the neodymium magnet be as far away from the center of the turntable as possible and it needs to move along with the turntable. So I just super glued the magnet here and you need to have it so that the, the magnet edge is as small as possible as it goes across the Hall effect sensor. Um, so how the turntable works is once you home it, this little magnet goes all the way around the bottom and then it stops at a zero position and then it moves backwards 10 steps. I know that probably doesn't make sense, but that's what it does. Now, what your program does, what the controller does, is it counts how many steps this little stepper motor needs to take to move this magnet all the way around um, the turntable to, to do one complete rotation. And then whenever you save a position, what the controller is doing is actually is remembering how many steps um, this magnet is away from its zero position and it saves that spot in the controller. So the controller really doesn't know where your turntable is. It knows where this magnet is and it bases everything off that. The reason that's important is because there's a, a what I refer to as a dead band. So you can't see it now, but whenever you, this turntable moves, this um, Hall effect sensor is very accurate, but there's actually a couple steps. Like for example, let's say 10 steps. This stepper motor can move 10 steps and this magnet is triggering the Hall effect sensor the entire time. So that's what I call the dead band. Now my controller takes the dead band into account and, and compensates for that. But whenever this magnet is interacting with the Hall effect sensor, your turntable controller has no idea where the turntable is actually at with any sort of accuracy. And the reason I say that is because let's say for example, your turntable on, on the top is actually in line with this magnet. You cannot program any positions where this magnet is activating the Hall effect sensor. So keep that in mind whenever you program this. Um, so that's how the, the electronics on this work. I think it's also an, important to talk about uh, what I refer to as the resolution of your turntable. So a small stepper motor like this has 200 steps per revolution. 200 steps per revolution really isn't a lot whenever you take into account how big the turntable is. If you broke this turntable up into 200 pieces, and then if you tried to just take this stepper motor and tr tie it directly to the turntable, it won't work. It's just doesn't, it's not granular enough. So for example, this gear ratio makes it so that my turntable needs to do about 27,000 steps of this stepper motor to do one complete rotation. And that that granularity, that resolution is what allows this turntable controller to be so accurate. Uh, now there is a limit to how many steps per revolution this turntable can, can remember. Um, I think it's 50,000 if memory serves. Um, look in the write-up, I'm sure I put it in there. But it's important to have a high, high number of steps per revolution for this turntable to work. Um, and I think that's it on the construction of the turntable.